I'm Helen Braidwood, I'm a civil engineer for the Canal and River Trust. And we're on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, which is joined both sides of it by the Stanage Tunnel. You can see the Pennines behind me, which they decided to build through, and you can see the tunnel going straight underneath it. In the early 1800s and the late 1700s, this area was very industrial. There was lots of mills in the area, um, both in Yorkshire and in Manchester, producing a lot of things such as cotton. So they needed to get things into the mills to produce the products and then get the products back out again. Um, so the Huddersfield Narrow Canal was built to take things away from Huddersfield products that, that could be sold to other areas and take them into Manchester where they could then be taken away on the Manchester Ship Canal and to the rest of the world. Civil engineers are the ones that designed and oversaw the construction. There was one main civil engineer who he started everything when it was first started to be built in 1796. By 1807, the construction was still carrying on and there'd been a lot of issues and the costs had really overrun. So at that point, Thomas Telford was brought in to oversee the design and he used his civil engineering expertise to um, create the tunnel that we have today. In the 1800s, the canal network across the country was basically like our motorways today. That's how what they used to get everything from towns and cities. It was a very slow system because nothing was obviously powered. They didn't have petrol to power the boats. So everything was horse-drawn. Um, so the towpaths, which are on the side of the canal, were designed for the horses to walk along. At Stanage Tunnel, there's not actually a towpath through the tunnel because of the extra, extra cost it would have incurred when they were building it and the extra um, engineering that would have been involved to create a bigger space. They decided to not put a towpath through it. So what they used to do was when the boats got to um, Marsden, where we are today, then the boats would go through and the horses would be walked across the top of the Pennines. Um, the way they got it through the tunnel without any power was by uh, men lying on top of the canal boats and walking along the top with their feet on the roof of the tunnel to get things through and that was called legging. The tunnel itself is the highest highest tunnel in Britain, the longest tunnel in Britain and the deepest tunnel in Britain. It's five kilometres long. If it was an empty narrow boat, it would take an hour and a half for the boat to get through the tunnel. And if it was full of cargo, it would take up to four hours. And at its peak, there was 40, about 40 boats a day would go through. So it brought a lot of industry into the area and also brought a lot of people into the area who then chose to live in this area and grew the surrounding towns, which was then a knock-on effect to bring more industry in and increase the number of mills in the area. So Stanage Tunnel nowadays is used for an entirely different uh, use. It's not industrial anymore. We'll have lots of things, like we'll have trip boats here that go through to give people an experience and see the engineering. So you can go all the way from Marsden to Diggle and get an experience of what it would have been like 200 years ago to go through the tunnel. The priorities within the canal are very different, but the civil engineers are still required to make sure that everything works properly. I'm the civil engineer that looks after the Huddersfield Narrow Canal to make sure that everything works and that everything is carried out in a safe manner. Civil engineering is a very important part of our history, um, as shown by Stanage Tunnel. It's something that has developed as the country's developed, and by being a civil engineer, you can be involved in something that will be around for a very long time and can have an impact on a lot of people's lives. Whether it's something like the canals which are ensuring that things which their use has changed over time is still suitable for future use or whether it's bringing in new technologies and adapting them for future progression. Being a civil engineer gives you a lot of opportunities to improve the lives of people.